hey guys welcome back to my channel thank you all for coming back and if you're coming by for the first time you're welcome as well today guys i feel like sharing with you some of my observations about Benin republic and you know kotonu precisely because i'm in kotonu and just try to um, you know draw comparisons between what i've observed about here and nigeria lagos precisely you know because i live in lagos nigeria as you all know and in case you didn't know now you know <laughs> so first of all i want to talk about the people because the people are the ones who constitute the life and you know make things go around in a particular place so um what i've observed about the people of Benin republic and kotuno is that they're very warm and hospitable people um honestly you see, they, they, are, they are so warm that they are, they are willing to give a helping hand when you seem inadequate. Uh, because I'm an English speaker, I come from an English speaking country and Benin Republic is a predominantly French speaking country. Although you have few locals who speak English to some extent and you know some people speak a little bit of Yoruba of course because of the proximity between Cross River sorry <laughs> because of the proximity between um, Kotunu and Lagos so some people speak Yoruba here but I don't speak Yoruba so it has been a little bit of a hassle but the people are warm you know they are willing to come to your aid to you know offer a helping hand and just being nice and all good so I like that about this place and I think it's, it's the same thing with people in Nigeria. The only difference is that I think for people in Nigeria and Lagos in particular, most times you, f you find that people tend to mind their business a little bit, especially, you know, when everyone is on the go, you know, trying to make something out of the day and all. But I think I understand because of the chaos. But that doesn't mean that people of Lagos are not warm. When you stop somebody and ask for assistance on the street or direction and all of that, they definitely give that support. So I think it's the same with the people of Kotuno and Lagos. The next thing I want to talk about is the electricity situation here in Kotuno. Guys, ever since I came to Kotuno, there has been no power outage even for a second. Like constant power supply and uh, the only difference is here you have to buy the unit but i think we have that in nigeria so just that it's not on a large scale it's not the common practice but you know even in nigeria you have the prepaid meter where you have to first of all buy the, the electric and um, the, the electricity power units to power your house or your premises it's the same thing here what you need to do is you buy the units here and then you subscribe and use your electricity and because of how expensive it is you have to mind how you use your appliances it's not like in nigeria where we have power and then we just use it even when you know we are not at home we probably leave the light bulbs on you leave your electric appliances on and all of that no it's not like that here in Kotonou. If you have to use your air conditioner, you pay extra. If you have to use your iron, I had an incident, guys. So I wanted to, you know, iron my clothes because I wanted to go out. And then I mistakenly, I didn't know, guys. I plugged the electric iron. Immediately I did that. There was power outage. And then when we called our hostess, she said we had exhausted the electric units. We needed to buy extra. That was strange, guys. That's not the practice in Nigeria, so it was strange to me. They had to come, you know, recharge and all before we, we had power restored back in the apartment here. So that's the second thing that is different between, you know, Kotunu and Nigeria. In Nigeria, we just have power and then at the end of the month, you are billed and then you pay your electricity bills or you buy your prepaid unit and use as you go. Here, it is different. The more you use, the more you pay. I mean, the appliances and all. So that is on, in terms of electricity. And then, next is about the water supply. So, there has been constant water supply as well clean tap 
on water. <laughs> um, I think it's similar to Lagos, similar to Nigeria. The only thing is that in some parts of Nigeria, there's no um, pipe bomb water, so you have to um, sink your own water and um, borehole or dig your well as is the case in some parts of Nigeria. But in Lagos, there's usually pipe bomb water and then people go ahead to also sink their boreholes. I've not seen any boreholes ever since I came here. There's, you know, pipe bomb water running 247, clean and non-stop. So that's another observation I've seen and, you know, how different it is between here and Nigeria. Next, guys. I know Nigerians are going to come for me, but hey guys, let's be honest. This is so different, guys. The roads in Kotonou are so different from the roads we have in Nigeria. I mean, what? I've not seen any pothole on the roads ever since I came. The roads are wide, well tarred, express, clean. And then you look at our roads in Nigeria. Guys, we need to do better as a country, honestly. We need to do better. The roads here are on another level. Smooth ride is guaranteed on these roads. But that's not the case in Nigeria. Let's do better, guys. <laughs> now, guys, talking about roads, that brings me to the public transportation system here in Benin Republic. I observe that the commonest means of transportation here is the motorcycles so if you want to go to any location what you use is motorcycles and they are quite reasonable reasonably affordable they charge from 200 sefa upwards depending on the location you are going to and you know the distance you are going to cover so bear that in mind when you come here and um, i've seen a few buses but those are the ones that travel like to towns that are outside Kotonu. so you, I have seen buses to Wida and other locations, but the commonest within Kotono City is the motorcycles and then of course private individuals have their own private cars that they drive in. So there are no buses, you know, commercial buses running town services, you know, within Kotono City. So that's the difference. Unlike Lagos where you have buses, you have Keke, you have Uber, Bolt. You have um, motorcycles and all, so that's the difference there. Now, riding on public transportation and the roads, you know, I also noticed something about this place. Um, ever since I came, I've not seen any filling station here. I don't know if it's because I've not probably gone to the locations where filling stations are, but from my movement within the city so far, I've not seen any filling station. What I find is people selling fuel in this you know, sort of bottles, big um, glass bottles, you know, from jerry cans, they measure it in those big bottles and then fill your car or bike for you. Unlike in Nigeria where you have, you know, filling stations strewn all over the place and selling fuel out of jerry cans and bottles is, you know, sort of like illegal and not common. Here is the reverse. The next thing I noticed about this place is their street food. So I saw a very interesting street food. The very first day I came here, there was this lady selling this street food. And then I talked to the, uh, one of the locals here and he told me it's one of their best foods. It's sous, they call it sous, sausage in English. So it's basically bread and then you have, you know, sauce added into it. I think you have... Uh, egg you have salad you have you know all those things going on inside and then you eat it they call it sausage the bread is a little bit hard it's not as soft as the ones i'm used to in nigeria so the only difference is that that sausage is not common in nigeria at least it's not prepared the way they prepare it here other than that they have other street foods like rice beans and spaghetti and all that you know going on here which we, we also have in Nigeria so basically guys that's it about the you know some of my observations about Benin Republic you know the similarities and the differences that I've noticed about the place by and large I've come to the conclusion that we are 
the same people, just different languages which were passed down to us by our colonial master. So while I speak English as an official language, here French is spoken. And then a little bit of cultural differences, obviously, but then every other thing is the same. Have you ever visited Cotonou Bene Republic before? What was your observation about the place that I didn't capture that you would like to also share? Drop a comment for me. I would like to know. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate you guys. If you've not subscribed, please consider clicking the subscribe button and the bell beside it just so you get notified each time I upload a new video. Thank you guys. I will see you in my next video. Bye.